Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So, in this lesson, we're going to begin a new script. Now, don't worry. In the choose character option, we are still going to have um, a demonstration selection of animations as you choose your fighter. Um, but we're going to come back to that and we're actually going to get more game functionality in place and we're going to begin before we can have our characters instantiate inside the scene we need a scene to put them in and because this, this is a fighting game we're not going to have levels obviously we're going to have stages that's going to cycle through just like any other fighting game so we'll have multiple stages and we'll just go through and it will load in a different stage each time until obviously we run out of stages then it'll circle round so we're going to do this by creating a new C sharp screen and we'll give it a name, and I'm going to just, just call mine Background Manager. And then we'll open it for editing. Okay, here we are in the script, and the first thing we need to do is add a new using statement right at the very top. So using Unity Engine dot scene management and we can just close the line off there we're going to come right at the very top and we're going to say public string underscore and we'll just give this a naming convention of selected background and it's going to be equal to an empty string so we just need the two little speech marks and we'll close the line off. Into the comments we'll say defines which background is currently selected. So there are simpler ways to um, do this but I'm going to do it this way because I'm going to give my scenes an actual name like a lot of fighting games do and I want to be able to see the name in the inspector and I also want to see the names in the script. Now we are just going to call them scene 1, 2, 3 and 4 for now but once I've actually begun creation of each and every scene well, we're going to fight in at that point, I'll start thinking of names of what to call each stage. So we'll say public int underscore and we're going to say background counter. We'll just close the line off into the comments. Defines numerical counter for our background and then we're going to come here and we're going to say public string and we're going to make an array so open and close the square type of bracket we need to give this a name so let's just call it underscore background scenes and it's going to be equal to a new string array will open and close brackets there so we'll come inside this set of brackets here two speech marks come in sign and we'll say scene zero we'll put the comma at the end so as I said I'm going to think of names of what to call this once I've actually finished creating each and every scene. But for now, I'm just going to give them a naming convention of scene and a numerical number. So I think I'll create eight scenes. 
Remember to remove the comma off the last entry and you also need to close the line off here. And then we'll just change the number. Because we start at scene zero, we're always going to finish, in my case, scene eight scenes. So we're always going to finish at number seven. And let's come to the void start. So the first thing we want is don't destroy on load. Open and close brackets. Close that line off. Inside the brackets, we'll just say this. And we'll get this into the comments. So let's say don't destroy this game object when loading a new scene and let's come here and I'm going to create a line break background counter is going to be equal to zero we'll close that line off into the comments set background counter to zero on startup and by doing that we're selecting the very first scene but we'll come to that in a moment. So let's save that off. We'll downsize mono develop. We are going to come back to it. Let's just clear those. And let's come to our scenes folder and come to splash screen. Let's create an empty game object. We'll reset the transform. And we will just give this a naming convention of background manager. We'll enter there and we'll drag and drop it into our prefabs. So just save the scene off there and let's come back to the script. So we can actually miss the void update for now. We'll come below and we'll make this of type private, of type void, because it does not return a value. And we'll say scene, yeah, we'll say scene background manager. Let's open and close there. We'll put in our debug.log. And as usual, we'll open and close brackets, come inside brackets, speech marks, and the name of the function. And we'll come here and we'll say if open and close brackets. Inside the bracket, we're going to say underscore, and we want the background counter. And we're going to say if it's less than the background scenes dot length. We'll come to the next line. And all we need to do is underscore background counter plus plus close the line off. So this is the length. As it's stated here. So I have a length of 8. So if we call this function. And we'll be calling this function from a different script. But when we call this. It says that if we haven't reached the final one. The complete length. Then we just add to the background counter. So we move from. Scene 0 to 1 and then 2 and so on. Into the comments. And we'll say if background counter is less than background scenes length. We'll come to the next line. We'll say then increase the 
background counter. Let's come here. And what we're going to do is, in fact, let's just copy. We'll copy the whole if block actually, and we'll just swap out what needs to be swapped. So this less than sign double equals. So if it equals the entire length, which means we are, we are at scene seven. So let's change the comment. If background counter is, we'll get rid of that and we'll say equal to the background scene's length. Then what we want to do is we'll come to this line equals zero just the one equals sign this time and we'll say then reset the background counter to zero so let's come here and we're going to say that the selected background is equal to the underscore and what we want is the background scenes will open and close brackets, close the line off. And sorry, should be the square type of bracket. And we'll say the underscore background counter. Uh, let's break this up for commenting. So we'll enter there after the equals. So we'll say selected background is equal to and let's say the background scenes um let's say based on background counter value so hopefully you can see how this works now. Uh, we have a counter. We set this empty string to be equal to that counter value, which is any of these values in here. And that way we can, when we use this variable of selected background, it should now equal whichever scene we are at. In this case, we're starting at scene zero. And let's put in private. Can be of type void again. And we'll say scene. Yeah, we'll say scene background load. Open and close brackets again. Let's come inside the brackets. Let's just copy this debug log. And we'll swap out the name inside. And we'll say scene manager. And what we'll do is say dot load scene. We'll open and close brackets, close the line off. And then we can load the selected background and again we'll probably end up calling this from another script so we'll say in load scene we'll say that is equal or shall we put that is based on the selected background value and as always you can enter these comments any way you like they're for your benefit so you don't have to wear them the same as I do I always repeat that but it is worth mentioning and we'll just say here create array of backgrounds and we'll just save that off there. I think we'll leave it here for this lesson. We've done quite a bit, so I'll just downsize mono develops 
And um, before we actually completely uh, quit this lesson, what you need to do in between now and the next lesson is, as you can see, I've imported some things into my project. Um, this is actually based on the Robot Labs demo that you can download free from the Unity Asset Store. And you'll need to create a scene for each and every one of the scenes here. So, come to new scene and obviously then save it as in your scenes folder, scene zero. And then import whichever model you wish to use. So, I'm going to, obviously, for the purposes of YouTube, I'm going to use the copyright free assets. Although, as you can see, the lighting's not set up. We'll go through setting up lighting and uh, various other things that will be uh, universal. So, regardless of what assets you're going to use personally, the lessons should be applicable for you. But, um, yes, for the purposes of YouTube, I need to use copyright-free assets. So, that's why I'm using things from the Unity Asset Store that's actually made by Unity themselves. So, obviously, I'm using the Robot Labs because I'm using robot characters. Um... What environments you choose to use is entirely up to you. If you're, for example, if you have human fighters, you may want a more organic background. But either way, create a scene for each and every scene you have in this string. And then we'll worry about putting it all together in the coming lessons. But as I said, we're going to leave it here for now. As always, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope to see you next time. And until then, as always, bye for now.